Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK, and it is my goal to provide to you the most honest, fact-based, critical reviews on YouTube. If you find this review helpful, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and help to support the channel by donating via the links below. Thank you so much, and enjoy the review. Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK, and this is my detailed review for the DC Designs F15 add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you want to know precisely what you get for your money, both good and bad, then make sure that you not only watch this video today, but also subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss any of our upcoming reviews in the future. This is the world-renowned and most recognised fighter jet ever produced. The F-15 can reach Mach 2.5, accelerate in a vertical climb to 60,000 feet, and carry more air-to-air -air missiles than any other US fighter. And, if needs be, it can also fly on just one wing. This is DC Design's F-15 variant ported over to Microsoft Flight Simulator from their previous version. It had a rocky release, with a significant number of issues. Fortunately, DC Designs were very quick to release a significant patch, resolving a vast percentage of the issues that I had encountered. And as such, I decided to withhold my original review, take a second look at it, and that's what you're going to be watching today. There are a couple of massive elephants in the room with us today, so let's talk about them first. Why do we even need combat aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator? It's a very good question, especially as Microsoft Flight Simulator is nowhere near equipped to cater for full combat simulation. Currently, you cannot fire weapons, damage other aircraft, you can't even collide with other aircraft on the ground, and even if you could, neither aircraft would have any damage modelling. Plus, the failure systems in Microsoft Flight Simulator simply do not cater for on-demand faults. With the exception for firing weapons, these are all features that I firmly believe will eventually need to be addressed in Microsoft Flight Simulator in order to allow for that complete flying experience where faults, crashes and collisions do unfortunately and unexpectedly occur. When you factor in other flight simulators which already very accurately provide all these features, it appears to make little sense to even embark upon such a project. Well, in order to attempt, at least, to provide a fair and balanced review, I will try and justify the existence of this F-15 payware project. And I have to emphasise the fact that this is not a study-level aircraft. It is intended just for fun. So the first thing is that this is an iconic aircraft. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, it looks gorgeous, sexy even. The way that the light and the shadows move in Microsoft Flight Simulator really emphasise the good looks that this aircraft has. The second thing that I noticed was that actually it's a lot of fun to fly, especially when you're flying at low level. This aircraft is exhilarating. Thirdly, and probably the most important thing is, let's not let a Sobo sit on their laurels. Yes, they have built something incredible with Microsoft Flight Simulator. But there is so much more that could be done. By introducing aircraft that highlight Microsoft Flight Simulator's limitations, we are intentionally asking Asobo to direct their development focus at particular areas. And that can only be a positive thing. Will Microsoft Flight Simulator ever cater for full-on combat simulated flights with air-to-air -air missiles and damage? Mm, honestly, I have no idea. I think it unlikely, but with the entire world mapped out in such great detail, and the lighting and the shading and the weather as good as it is, oh my gosh, if they did do it, it would be absolutely spectacular. Can you imagine watching an exploding enemy foe with one of those absolutely gorgeous Microsoft Flight Simulator backdrop sunlit moments? Can you just, ah, oh, I hope they do it. Alas. Right now, that's not likely to materialise anytime soon. So what we can expect from this product right now is a gorgeous looking aircraft and some realistic and enjoyable flight models. The next elephant is bespoke to you. Is a fun only aircraft that might eventually evolve considerably over time worth £26.99 to you at this time? Really interested to know your feelings on that particular element. Personally, in its initial release date, at that price, I would not have recommended it at all. My original review was absolutely scathing. I was not impressed at all. 
But since the patch updates have arrived, things definitely are more convincing. The question is though, have they missed a trick here? I personally think that it might be the case that considerably more people would have been happy to pay 10 or 15 pounds for this product in order to get that fun factor kick and not worry about the lack of detail and hope that in the future more advanced capabilities may materialise in a year or two. For such a small investment I really could see huge numbers of new pilots jumping at the opportunity to fly an F-15 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It could have sold like hotcakes, but at this price I'm not so sure. If they had have dropped the price to about 10 or 15 pounds, then there would have been an opportunity for similar aircraft like MiG-25s, MiG-29s, the F-14, the F-16, all at the same detail and the same price level. Ultimately, despite being such an iconic aircraft, would they perhaps have sold more than twice the number of sales if they'd have dropped the price by half? Perhaps that's being inconsiderate of the time and effort required to port something from FSX into Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am very interested in your thoughts on this. Do you feel that it's a fair price or not? Obviously, we're going to have to talk about the details in a minute, but I wanted to put this question out there first so that you can start thinking about it whilst I'm telling you what the aircraft does and does not deliver. If not, would you be more inclined to buy this product if the price was 50% lower? Please do let me know what you think about that. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's discuss exactly what you get for your money. This F-15 from DC Designs is, is a port from their existing P3D and FSX model. Now, there were some serious issues at launch, um, some serious LOD failures which allowed you to see straight through the engine among lots of other issues. And there were reflection issues on the canopy and just an overall lack of quality throughout. There were some really bad low-res uh, display elements in the cockpit. Thankfully, the update has fixed that and DC Designs in, in credit that to them, in justification to them, have been very quick to get on top of this and fixed a vast majority of the issues that I was concerned about. Now the FPS in the cockpit initially was so bad that even in unpopulated areas it was damn near unusable. Thankfully that has now been resolved and whilst I wouldn't say it was perfect, it's a heck of a lot better. It's certainly usable now. The cockpit opening and closing animations are really nice and where you could previously fly about with it open, the cockpit now closes automatically and remains closed whilst you're flying. There is an internal external delay of the animation so if you uh, pull the lever to open the canopy and then go to the external camera you will see it opening a second time. That's not a big thing, just something to notice. The cockpit overall has a very limited clickable interface but again this is for fun and it's not study level. There is a significant flicker on the canopy. Now originally it was really, really terrible to the point where it would vanish and reappear and the reflections inside and out, they were like someone had chucked a, paint, uh, a bucket of white paint over the screen. They were a complete whitewash. It was awful. The update patch has improved all these issues, but I, I feel like it still needs some work. In the blurb about the product, it does mention scratched canopy glass effects but these are not visible to me at all. In fact, so bad are the glass effects of the canopy when you're in the cockpit, it looks like there is no cockpit glass at all. And as far as I'm concerned, the working rear view mirrors are not working at all well. There are occasionally glimpses of clouds, but other than that, I don't think they're working very well at all. And that's after the update as well. Now the MFDs have visual layouts, but sadly they are completely inoperable. The cockpit lighting is pretty good. You've got slime lights for night operations. The custom HUD that they've built is nice to see and it works pretty well, but at times it was, it was a little bit hazy and very difficult to see. Perhaps that's actually more authentic of the real aircraft, I don't know, but it was quite difficult for me to tell what speed I was doing, what altitude I was at. It was just a little bit too far away, the text was a little bit too small, and it was just a little bit fuzzy and blurry. And depending on the light um, that was in front of you, at times it was completely illegible. So I've tried to show you the external modelling of the F-15 in this review as much as possible, because for me, I've got to say, they've accurately captured the F-15 really well. It looks so authentic. Like I say, there are some areas of the external model that suffer with low resolution textures. Now there are some pre-existing external animations like uh, G-Vapor, which in my opinion looks very poor in a modern simulator like Microsoft Flight Simulator. It lacks both realistic animation and texture quality. It's pretty awful and 
I really think it's something they're going to have to address because it looks so bad. Microsoft Flight Simulator themselves are about to launch their Contrails update. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that looks because right now we've got none at all, no wingtip trails or anything like that. So hopefully that will improve things a lot. Now there are some th issues that I had with the uh, with the flight sim that I haven't been able to resolve. Now I'm not saying that they don't work, I'm saying that I couldn't get them to work. The arrestor hook. It's not called an arrestor hook. Um, I believe it's called an emergency an emergency lever or something like that. I forget exactly what it's called now. But when I bound that to a button on my controller, nothing seemed to happen. So I couldn't get the arrestor hook to come down. As it is, I'm landing on an aircraft carrier that's a free mod. And as such, it's not really an aircraft carrier. So landing on it is incredibly difficult. There's no arrestor hook on it at all. So even if I could get the arrestor hook to work, uh, it wouldn't actually stop the aircraft. The afterburners looked pretty average initially, but since the update they are far more pleasing to the eye. I'm not entirely sure I think they're perfect, but they're definitely a lot better than they were originally. The external animations include uh, canopy, crew ladders, tail hook apparently, and control surfaces, which do appear to all work fine. I didn't really have any issues with that. You can see the, um, the massive air brake, um, the spine loaded air brake seems to work perfectly well. Now, regarding ordnance, which is weapons and bomb loadout, there's a bespoke loadout screen for weaponry. In the original release, it looked like it worked, but I couldn't see any weapons attached to the aircraft. Since the patch, it does now work, but obviously Microsoft Flight Simulator limitations, you still cannot fire those weapons, unfortunately. Now the custom coded user controlled ordinance via the simulator's payload manager is actually very good. It works very well. And it does also allow for the live mounting of weapons on hard points with active weight increase. And that's quite important for the next uh, section, which is about the flight model. So the initial Mac limitations of Microsoft Flight Simulator capped this F-15 at Mac 1, but they've managed to overcome this problem and now it's capable of reaching Mac 2.5, which is roughly 2,000 miles per hour. Unfortunately, we don't get a sonic boom, but the aircraft itself now feels far more responsive and agile. It's kind of like a surgeon's scalpel, whereas before it felt a little bit like a woodcutter's axe. When this aircraft is fully loaded, that is max weight capacity, maximum takeoff weight, the aircraft unsurprisingly flies very differently. Takeoffs especially become more challenging and they require a much, much longer runway. The ceiling drops from 60,000 feet to 40,000 feet, although I have to point out that with a 10% load, I did actually manage to get over 75,000 feet, so that 60,000 feet is not definitive, you can push past it. Now the F-15 is one of the most stable aircraft ever designed, capable of flying on just a single wing. As such, stalling and spinning this aircraft are damn near impossible to achieve. I tried to do it multiple times without success. There's even a section in the manual which tells you how to get out of a stall or a spin, but I just couldn't get it to spin or stall. I don't know how well it handles in that situation because I just couldn't get it to stall. It was damn near impossible. I mentioned that landings in this aircraft are very difficult and one of the things that make it so difficult is the throttle. It's very, very sensitive. For me, it felt like I had absolutely nothing for the first 50% of the axis and then suddenly, from the middle onwards, very small movements made a massive difference. So if you just happen to knock the throttle with your hand and it edged forward maybe one millimetre, that would have actually a massive effect on your speed and handling. That makes landings very tricky. Now that might be something to do with Microsoft Flight Simulator. It might be something to do with my controller, but I've got to be honest with you, I used an Xbox controller for quite a lot of the recording on this, and I only spent maybe three to four hours uh, flying with my real flight rig, um, but using both of them, I had exactly the same problem. So I think it likely to be related to the aircraft itself. Now there were some audio improvements included as part of the update and I've got to say that the audio before was very, very poor and now with the update it's still poor overall. It has a few good bits like when you're in the cockpit and you make uh, a sudden movement or adjustment you get a really good audible sound like the engine sort of, not the engine but the chassis sort of shifting and the, the loose bits in the aircraft just moving about. That genuinely sounds pretty good as it does when the engines are spooling up. I also think that sounds pretty decent. 
Part of the update actually, um, every flight I started, started with the engines just beginning to spool up. But since the patch update, when I load the aircraft in, the engines are ready to go. Now that's quite beneficial because it means I don't have to sit there for two minutes waiting for both the engines to spool up. So that's pretty cool. But in contrast, you can't actually start in a cold and dark state. So again, it's not a study level aircraft, it's just for fun. So I guess from that perspective, it's better now that the engines are pre-started for you. When you're flying in the cockpit, in my humble opinion, it's too quiet. There's no sound when the afterburners are fired. The landing gear uh, mechanics make no audible sound at all. Even when you slam the air brake on, there is no audible difference at all. It's not even very loud when you land badly. The balance seems well off. They might be trying to emulate the fact that you're wearing a helmet inside of the cockpit, but even so, you should get some muffled audible sounds of the landing gear coming up at least. I think work needs to be done on the audio in this particular aircraft. So before I surmise this review, I want to cover the cameras, which initially didn't work at all. So broken, in fact, that I couldn't even use the drone camera. It just wouldn't work with this aircraft at all. Well, they've updated it now, and we do have two external cameras, but my word, have they been poorly chosen. You've got two camera positions from either side of the cockpit, and that's it. It's simply not good enough. Internal cameras are better, but again, I just think camera positioning and just the, the pre-designed camera options need to be improved. So my original review was scathing, to say the least. Now, now I just feel like it's priced a little bit too high. $26.99 for me just feels a lot to ask for a fun-only experience with such limited level of detail across the board. Now, DC designs have been very good in the first week of release. They've improved what was originally released considerably, and it's now at least enjoyable, fully enjoyable, um, and maybe they'll continue to do that and improve the audio and fix some of the still existing issues in the game. But I just think for 10 or 15 pounds, a lot of people would have snapped this up and probably would have allowed them to make more money overall, which is at the end of the day, they're a business, that's what they're there to do. I can at least recommend the aircraft now that the patch is here. And I mean, it's a lot of fun and it is stunning to look at. But it's up to you to decide if the price is fair. Now, like I say, it is good to see that DC Designs were so quick to patch many of the issues that were present at launch. The installation procedure is completely automated. It's fully automated. And for the majority of you out there, that will work absolutely fine. But if, like me, you have your Microsoft Store installation default location on a dedicated second drive, then that installation process won't work for you. I did ask Justify if they could allow the option for a manual installation, but they felt that it would be too much work and it would also put too much of a burden on consumers to work out where the installation was supposed to go. So in order for me to install it, I had to copy and paste or rather cut and paste it from the default location to the correct location for my system. Now most people won't have to do this because most people do not even know how to change the location of their Microsoft Store default installation folder. I'm interested to know what issues you have had if Steam, if you have a Steam version of Microsoft Flight Simulator installed on a second drive. I don't know if you're going to experience the same problems or whether it's just people like me. Anyway, this is a fun aircraft. It is gorgeous to look at. Audibly it's lacking and it's still got a few issues. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think it's worth £26.99? Would you be more inclined to buy it if it was 10 or 15 pounds. I'd be really interested to know because I think for 10, 15 pounds, this is an absolute steal and you should definitely grab it and enjoy it because it's so much fun. But at 26.99, I just feel like it's lacking that attention to detail that needs to be consistent throughout all Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons. That's it from me. I hope this review has been helpful to you. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on this one. Cheers. Bye for now.